Now the question is, let's say we extend this exercise here. What happens to the high carbohydrate group? They're metabolically crippled. They're metabolically crippled because they can't burn fat. I showed you that slide. They can't burn fat. Let's go back. They can't burn fat. The fat's stuck there. They can't burn more fat. They've got no glycogen. What are they going to do? So technically they're in trouble. So this is quite interesting, uh, an interesting study. And what you really need to do now is to see what happens thereafter. And unfortunately, we, we haven't done that as yet. So, so the prediction then is, so fat adapted can oxidize fat at 1.2 grams per minute during exercise. As a result, most humans can perform most forms of exercise just burning fat. That, that has to be the conclusion. And so is that why we store so much energy as fat? And that's my conclusion, that, that humans are designed to burn fat and that we have converted ourselves to carbohydrate burning metabolic cripples by eating so much carbohydrate. So I want to talk about the average person and the per that's what you have to understand. So the previous lecture talked about the metabolic syndrome and, and made the point, as I believe, that all those diseases are the same. They all result of insulin resistance. So the disease of insulin resistance is not this. Those are... Those are the symptoms, the disease is this disease. And the point is we all lie somewhere on this curve. And what I have, I sit at this end with type 2 diabetes, highly carbohydrate resistant. And if you are carbohydrate tolerant, you can do what you like. And I suspect that the world's best athletes probably are highly insulin sensitive and can burn more carbohydrate and probably need to burn more carbohydrate to run really fast over 800 meters 1,500 meters. I don't contest that. That I guess those guys are highly insulin sensitive. But once the event goes longer than two or three hours, I think the story changes. And if you sit on this end and you eat all the carbohydrates that I told you to eat, uh, then that's what's going to happen. You're going to get type 2 diabetes like me. So that's terribly important. And that's what we forget. We don't individualize the diet for the individual athlete. And so it is absolutely criminal to tell an athlete with insulin resistance to eat a high carbohydrate diet because they will get type 2 diabetes. Winning the Comrades Marathon because well, I told him to eat lots of carbohydrate and we thought he would be fantastic. Well, a few years later, he's not looking so great. He's got the metabolic syndrome, okay? And he's, he's on the high carb diet, you can see he's got a bit of a belly and he's got terrible legs and he's got fat on the back <laughs> and so on. So, <laughs> so we convert him to the high fat diet and this is him looking, and this is with Zola Bud, one of the great South African athletes. This is, he just finished the Comrades Marathon, which here he finishes in 5 hours 30, here he finishes in 10 hours, and here he finishes in 7.5 hours at the age of 55. He now runs 5 kilometers in 18 minutes at altitude, at the age of 60, at 55. He's looking amazing, okay? So there's a classic insulin resistance story for you. And so I caused his metabolic syndrome, but I also saved him in the end. 